This is one of my picks for Eason Mustreads this winter. It's called The Book of Love by Fanula Carney. It's a beautiful, heart-wrenching love story. Um, it's about a couple, Aaron and Dom, who meet and get married very quickly. So there's bets at, during the wedding that the marriage isn't going to last. But in fact, it does last, but they, ha they suffer grief and turbulence and the ups and downs of a 20-year marriage. Um, and The Book of Love is actually a notebook that they're given on their wedding day. And when they can't communicate to each other verbally, they write, they communicate by writing in the book and then they read each other's feelings and emotions. And this is kind of what, what keeps them going throughout their marriage. Um, but it's real warts and all difficulties um, of kind of, I suppose, a modern day marriage, but it's beautiful and uh, their kind of, their love endures despite everything. And then there's, uh, I'm not gonna give you, uh, give away the ending, but um, tissues will be required, let me put it that way. That would be extremely harsh if you gave away the ending. That would be just, no one would watch this <laughs> yeah. video. Uh, my first choice uh, is this. It's Sally Rooney's Normal People. It comes from a much earlier point in the relationship of uh, two people. Connell and Marianne uh, both grow up in the same town in the west of Ireland, uh, but one of them grows up in a really nice house with uh, plenty of money, and the other, his mother, is the cleaner in that house. Uh, Connell and Marianne have a relationship in school that starts off as a friendship which then becomes something else. The story takes us all the way through then going to college uh, and through each of them growing and developing and in particular Connell's problems in, in the school he's kind of a big man everybody knows who he is it's a small town and how he copes with moving then to a bigger city and going to a bigger university and it's their relationship as they kind of fall in and out and in and out and in and out of love with each other or relationship with each other as it goes on. I'm not going to reveal anything either, other than chances are you've heard Sally Rooney's name at this point, and, and rightly so. Her first book uh, was beautiful. This is, in my opinion, ten times the first book, and I loved the first book. Uh, it was nominated recently. It was long listed for the Booker Prize as well, um, and it's one of my finest, finest books of the year. I loved it. It's called Normal People, and it's by Sally Rooney. I will take that You're taking that one, that one away? Okay, yes, that's fine. absolutely. Um, I always think it's nice to have a good biography for winter. Uh, this is In Pieces by Sally Field, autobiography. Um, a lot of people, when they write an autobiography, get someone to help them, but she is such a beautiful writer. I mean, she's just so talented in every way. I have to say I'm a big fan of hers anyway, but I thought the book was going to be a lot about her you know, life in Hollywood and her relationship with actors and directors and all the rest of it. And there is a little bit of that, particularly there's a whole piece about Burt Reynolds in that. Um, but actually, really, a lot of it's about her childhood, um, which was pretty dysfunctional. Um, she had a very creepy stepfather um, and a very complicated relationship with her mother, which kind of endured throughout her whole life. Um, but it's beautifully written, it's really engaging, and you really understand why she is the way she is. And I have to say, I couldn't put it down, and it made me admire her even more. I was going to go for something else, so no, I'm going to go the route here. There we go. All right. I'm going to swap seize the bottom one out because I have one autobiography and I think it's the first time that I've done one of these uh, as well, which is Eric Idle's Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. Um, I've read a load about the Pythons over the years. I got into them initially. They became a thing in my school when I was about 13 or 14. That was long, long after they were off TV and long after Life of Brian had been made. You're trying uh, to pretend you're really young. I am absolutely <laughs> trying to pretend that I'm much younger than I am. Much. They finished in television the year I was born, I'll have you know. This relationship is over. That's it. We're, we're done. We're wearing cheesy so, Christmas jumpers. We can't be no, trying to be cool. Valid point. <laughs> Glad somebody mentioned them. Um, so this is, I've read loads of stuff about them before. Michael Palin's uh, notebooks. I've read books about the Pythons. I read John Cleese's book a couple of years ago. Um, there's tons in this I didn't know, which is lovely. And it's not just that. It's how he ended up getting into the footlights in Cambridge, which is where a load of these people came from. The Python years, beyond that, spam a lot. Uh, him singing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life in front of some of the most famous people in the world and he name drops just beautifully and he's wanton about it. He takes little hand grenades of name drops and just throws them here. At the time I was on George Harrison's yacht, um, I'm the godfather to David Bowie's son. All of this. So I think out of all the Pythons, he was the one who actually lived a properly rock and roll lifestyle. It's great, it's joyous, you'll have great fun um, reading it uh, over the Christmas period and it's called Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. I like the sound of that. So let's go to Thriller. So this is an Irish writer, Joe Spain. It's called The Darkest Place. Um, I love a good thriller. This is not for the faint-hearted. Um, it moves between the current day where the um, detective is trying to solve a murder to the person who was murdered, who is a doctor who's been missing for 40 years. And he went missing from the institution that he worked in, uh, which was on an island. And they used some very controversial methods with their patients who were um, a lot of the time sent there and abandoned by their families. So um, it was a kind of a 
institution for pe people with kind of mental health problems. So there are some very, very difficult scenes of, of, of the controversial methods they used. Um, and so, as I said, it's not for the faint hearted, but it's brilliant. It's really twisty and turny. And until the very last page, there's a brilliant twist. Um, and I think it's really, really clever. It's different and definitely one that will keep you up to finish it because you have to find out what happens. It's brilliant. I'm going to go uh, for my third one with this, with Graham Norton. Now, if you read Holding, which was his um, first novel, you're going to like this. This is this is more of the same. It's set in a similar universe. Well, most of it is. Um, part of the story is set uh, with Elizabeth. Elizabeth is coming back to Ireland to do as many people end up doing to take care of the affairs of her family after her mother dies. She's been living in the United States. Um, she comes back home, goes back to the village that she was brought up in and quite quickly finds out that there is more to her mother's story than she knew at the time. The second part of the story flips back to uh, the uh, story of her father and her mother about how they meet each other. I had a conversation with Graham Norton. I did two Eason's interviews with him um, name drop. recently. Yeah, total name drop. Uh, twice. I was so, it was so good we had to do it on a second night. Um, and when uh, I met him, I said, what are you happy to talk about in terms of plot? Because I've seen some reviews of this where they've just all over the place are talking about things I'd rather find out about in the book. And he said, he, the latter part of the story, the mother um, is quite lonely, and this is decades ago in Ireland, puts an ad in the Irish Farmer's Journal in a column which still exists to this day, apparently, looking for love and a man with road frontage, and she finds him. Uh, but, again, quickly, that story turns out to not be everything that it appears to be as well. It's full of secrets, um, it's full of beautiful little observations, which he is very, very capable of making as an, as an author. Uh, and it's going to sell big time. It is called A Keeper, and it is by the Graham Norton. And most of the ads still come from Munster, apparently. Do the things yeah, I, I knew, you didn't know you knew. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I won't say how I know that. <laughs> My uh, final winter pick is Andy Lee's The Fighter. I'm not a big fan of boxing, I have to be honest, but um, so I wasn't sure how much I was going to like this book. I read quite a few sports biographies to choose and I loved it. I absolutely couldn't put it down. It's brilliant. It's basically he is a bullied uh, traveller boy who ends up using boxing as a way out. Um, at the age of sort of 17, 18, he moves to Detroit to work in the, sorry, to train in the very famous Cronk's gym. He's the only white fella in the village in Detroit. Um, he's very lonely, but he stays there and it is about overcoming adversity, it's about pushing your body to the limit and it's about absolutely going for what you want and not giving up on your dream because he loses his first middleweight champion fight and then he ends up going to England and the English coach deconstructs all of his training over the last 10 years and starts to train him in a completely different way and then a couple of years later he has a fight to win the world champion and he does win it and he becomes the middleweight champion of the world which is kind of extraordinary. But really it's, um, it's, it's about everything that he had to sacrifice, it's about everything that he did and um, it's just a fascinating insight into the world of boxing uh, without being too gory and it's just fantastic, couldn't put it down, highly recommend. Uh, my final one is, I don't think either of us has recommended a proper horror horror book so far in these lists. Um, this is Sarah Perry's Melmoth, uh, The Essex Serpent was her last book, it was huge. Um, this book is Victorian Gothic horror of the best kind. There are two types of horror. There's quiet, quiet, bang horror. And then there's horror that's creeping and slow and atmospheric and slowly over the course of time makes you feel as if there's somebody reading over your shoulder. And this is very much in the second category. It is set in the present day. Um, it's set uh, with uh, Helen Franklin, who's an English woman. She's a translator and she's working in Prague. She, through some of her friends that she is there with, comes across the tale of Melmoth the Wanderer. Melmoth the Wanderer uh, wanders the earth and has done so since the time of Jesus and witnesses all of the terrible things that people do to other people. Now, of course, Helen initially takes this to be utter nonsense and an old folk tale until she starts to find evidence, both in real life and in writings that are part of the book as well, that it may not be all that it seems. And then it seems that Helen may have something in her past that Melmoth might be interested in. This is beautifully atmospheric, it's creepy. It made me uh, immediately want to go back to Prague. I've been to Prague once in my life, and it made me want to go there it, when it's cold in the winter. Um, and if you're in any way into this kind of horror, this book will be for you. Um, there are moments in it that are incredibly cinematic and that are gorgeous just to read. And it's creepy as all hell. It's called Melmoth and she's Sarah Perry. We're loving these books and we think you will too.